everybody! Today's video is going to be for all you brass players out there that want to get better at their high range. I will be going over four exercises that I do daily that I believe help my high range a lot. I might be a horn player, but these are four exercises that can be done across all brass instruments to improve your high register. Before we get too far in this video, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and leave a thumbs up on this one too. So without further ado, let's get to the video. The very first thing I do is a buzzing routine and playing my chromatic scales. This is the first thing I do every single day. I notice that if I skip this step, my playing isn't as smooth as days when I do it. I begin with free buzzing. I free buzz half steps. I go half steps down at a time. And after I do that, I free buzz octaves. If you don't like free buzzing, feel free to skip this step. A lot of people I've met cannot stand it. And if you know you're one of those people, that's okay. But if you've never tried it before, I encourage it. I didn't try it until college and it's like my favorite thing to do now. If you're new to free buzzing, I recommend you start simple. Don't do too much of it at once and don't have it replace your mouthpiece buzzing. Just start by trying to control a really solid half step interval and that'll be a great introduction to it. After I free buzz for about five minutes, I then supplement with 10 to 15 minutes of mouthpiece buzzing. If you don't want to buzz for that long, uh, keep the, what's the word, keep the proportion the same. So if you free buzz for one minute, then do four or five minutes of mouthpiece buzzing. You always want to do more mouthpiece buzzing than free buzzing. I normally do the same routine on my mouthpiece. I do the half steps and then octaves. I just tend to have a larger range on my mouthpiece compared to free buzzing. So I'll free buzz maybe an octave or two, and then when I move to my mouthpiece, it'll be more like three or four octaves. <laughs> Buzzing always really wakes up my, my face and my airflow, so after that I immediately go into chromatic scales so that I can transfer that smooth airflow and really easy buzz across the registers immediately into a chromatic scale. So theoretically, I'm just adding my moving fingers to that already perfect buzz that I have. I find that buzzing first thing in the morning not only helps wake up my registers for the day, but it also helps me coordinate how to use my air and my embouchure properly <laughs> so that I don't overuse one versus the other, and that is what is going to help your high register sound easy. Normally with my chromatic scales, I start playing them two octaves. I start with the C, C3 in the bass clef, and I play them up two octaves, so that's the C in the staff, and after I complete that chromatic scale, I move up a half step, so then D flat to D flat, and then D to D, and I keep doing that up chromatically until I hit G, G just below the treble clef staff, and once I hit that G, I start doing them three octaves. I do it from the pedal G, the bottom of the bass clef, and then I go all the way up to the G just above the treble clef staff, G5. From there, I also go up chromatically until I hit C in the bass clef, and I'm playing up to the C above the staff. If you find that your high register is not sounding the way you want it to, go back to the mouthpiece buzzing. Buzz that spot on your mouthpiece and see how it sounds. If you find that the tone suddenly dips away on certain notes, that's probably transferring to what you're doing on the horn. So fix the buzz and then your chromatic scales should fix as well. If you're not a horn player and I'm throwing out these notes at you, you don't necessarily have to start at these notes, obviously. Do what is appropriate for your instrument. This is just what I do as a horn player. Number two, I play arpeggios in every single key with different articulations. I hit my arpeggios every day because I practice playing in different keys and it's a way for me to practice high notes not in a scalar pattern so that I'm approaching them from further away. <laughs> practice them with different articulations because that changes the ball game a lot for people. I slur up to high notes significantly better than I do tonguing up. If you've heard any of my covers on my channel, you might notice that if I hit super high notes, they tend to be slurred up to. In my Candide cover or in Hide and Seek, I hit a high F only because I slur up to it and it's at piano. If you ask me to play those high notes, tongued and forte and in your face that I can't guarantee they'd come out that way. <laughs> but they will one day, I hope, and that's because I'm practicing my arpeggios and more often than not I do them tongues because I know I slur better. Third thing we're going to talk about is overtones. So this one is going to be a little more horn specific, but I think the information could still be useful for all brass players. All brass instruments play on the overtone series. The overtone series is 
a part of physical science that basically tells our instruments what notes it plays. It is the reason why when you play a certain fingering, you can play the certain notes on that one fingering. It is why for every brass instrument, you have your bottom open note, and the next open note above that is always a perfect fifth. It's very common for horn players to practice their overtone series daily. I play mine three octaves daily in a lot of different keys, whereas I've never really heard of trumpet players or trombonists doing that. Maybe some of you out there do, but I just, I'm not familiar with it. But the knowledge of slurring through your overtone series is priceless and I think it could help anybody. If you're a horn player out there, I recommend you start by playing the C and the bass clef. And even if you don't know your overtone series, you're just gonna focus on slotting up to the next open partial. You'll find that when you start getting C in the treble clef staff to that C above, uh, the notes are going to get very close together. So obviously this exercise is great for flexibility and facility, but it is especially helpful for when you get up there and all those notes get so close together. You're working towards this sense of ease in the high register and accuracy. Once you're able to move around there as fluidly as you want, your high register and playing your music is going to get a lot better. If you're a brass player that doesn't play horn, you can also try to start at your lowest note and go up as high as you can. I know most of you won't play your overtone series three plus octaves like a lot of horn players, but you can still use this information to your advantage. Get used to how your instrument works and all those weird partials in between that you don't normally use. And having that kind of control will help you control other high notes as well. Lastly, the one you've all been waiting for, number four is long tones. I bet high long tones were just the thing you wanted to hear. I know a lot of people roll their eyes at long tones and they know it's a thing that they should be doing. It helps a lot, but they just find them boring. I understand there's a good chance that high long tones will really help your high range playing. You might be happy to hear that. I'm not just gonna tell you to hold out a high note forever until your face gets better at it. I pick a note in my mid range and I think of the key associated with that note. So I normally, as a horn player, start on my G in the staff, and I think of my G major scale. From there, I do long tones starting on G, and I slur up to the next note in the scale, so G to A, and then back down to G, and I hold out each of those notes like a long tone. So if I start on G in the staff, and I'm thinking of the scale, I go from G to A to G, G to B natural, and slur back down to G then G to C to G. And I go through the whole thing until I reach the top of the scale, slurring up the octave and then back down. This exercise is not metered or I don't put it to any specific tempo or anything, but you do it however you feel like is best for you. After I complete that first set, that first scale, I then move up chromatically up to A flat in this case, and I'll start on A flat from A flat to B flat to A flat, A flat to C to A flat and so on. I do this until I reach maybe like a fifth a sixth above that. I'll try my best to shoot for anywhere between C or D on a normal day. If I'm really pushing it, I try to go above that and it just depends on how I feel. You can also be a little more creative with this. Let's say this isn't hard enough for you or you wanna push yourself more, start on the higher note. You can start on the G above the staff and go down. So you can start on G, go to F sharp to G, G to E to G and so on and so forth following that pattern. I do want to say when you're doing this exercise, please don't hurt yourself. I think it's really easy when brass players play either really high stuff or really loud stuff for a long period of time, they can hurt themselves. I before have experienced like shooting pains in my face and whenever that happens, please just put your horn down for like a couple hours and go do something else. So those are my four ways of getting a better high register for brass players. I hope this helped you and know that there are so many ways that you can get better at your high register. Really the best way to get a better high register is just to play up there. Know that it's not gonna come overnight and it's not gonna come without you putting the time into it. Thank you so much for all of your support. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more weekly videos. Leave a like, comment down below, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much, bye.